All right, welcome everybody. My name is Larry James. My company is Speak with Larry, No Spaces. And today we have a guest by the name of Shivani Reina. And uh, she works at Fiat Chrysler and has nearly 10 years of experience in the technology industry with roles of increased responsibility. Her passion of strategic thinking, a natural leader and resilience helps her deliver exceptional results in all her endeavors. We will be talking about strategic vision and how to bring it to life. In today's meetings, where Shivana will share her professional and personal experience, which makes her a natural strategic leader. Okay, so with that, welcome to the show, Shivana. Shivani. Thank you. So yes, that's that's not a problem, uh, Shivani. Yes, uh, okay. thanks for thanks for having me, Larry. I'm so glad that we connected and we are going to have a discussion about this topic. I okay. did go through your YouTube page and I see that you are also very passionate about strategy because yes. I saw a video out there. Right. So I think it's going to be a very fantastic conversation. Great, great. So um, tell us a little bit how you got interested in what it is that you do. Absolutely. So uh, from the very beginning, actually, I have been passionate about technology. Technology is like my first love. Okay. And I am an IT, I'm a computer coder, like I'm a programmer from uh, heart, or, you know, uh, right from my school days, I was very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, you know, paved the path. I started using technology to build simple solutions for old age homes and, uh, you know, orphanage. And it just kept fueling me. And what I realized at an early age, that you can use technology in a way to help people. And it's very cheap. You don't have to um, spend a lot. All you need is a computer and a small bit of hardware and you can uh, bring the change. Sure. So that's mm -hmm. what really fueled it. And then I did, all my education is in um, you know, programming languages. Uh, you know, My bachelor's in electronics telecommunication and master's in embedded programming. So, that's just the journey I have. And then experiences in different technologies mm -hmm. uh, with increasing responsibilities in the, in the area. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think with technology the way it is that you were actually born at the right time? Uh, what you mean, did you say, was I born at the right time? Right, because, you know, like 25, 30 years ago, if you had been born, technology wasn't like it what it is now, you know. And you wouldn't have been able to capitalize on all the opportunities that technology you offers. Are, you are so right, because I think I was born at the right time when the technology was at boom. Right. And, you know, when I was uh, in school, we had this computer. It was uh, like the first computer. It was pretty bulky. Right, right. Today. But then I had it and my dad wouldn't, um, I come from a very humble background. Uh, and that is for another uh, story. But then my dad was very passionate about helping me grow in whatever I want to do. Gotcha. No matter what, he did spend money on that and, you know, got me everything that I needed. Mm -hmm. So I think it was absolutely, I was born in the right time because I got access to all these new technologies at a very really early age and uh, my interest was fueled by it. And uh, I was able to see how it can, um, make change to real to real uh, life scenarios. Gotcha. Now we talked a little earlier before we got we came live about um, you being from in, uh, another place other than where you live now. Where yes. was that place? I belong uh, to a place called Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir in India. Okay. It is a very cold place uh, and uh, we don't live there anymore because of certain disturbances that are there and we had to move out of there. Mm -hmm. But then now uh, I live in Michigan, uh, Auburn Hills. It's pretty close to Detroit. Okay. And I work at Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. Okay. And um, couldn't have chosen a better place. I'm all about, I'm a Michigander because uh, the temperature here and the way it looks, it's, it's very similar to how Kashmir used to be. So right. it's like, it's, it's home for me. Uh -huh. Excellent, excellent. Now, how long have you been with the uh, Fiat Chrysler? Yeah, sure. So with Fiat, it has been nearly six uh, plus years now. Wow, wow. And uh, I, before that, I worked with IBM in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when I started working with Chrysler, 
it was in the legacy environment. Um, I don't know if you have heard about mainframes. Mainstream? Mainframe. Oh, main, yeah, for mainframe. Uh -huh. Mainframe. People talk about it a lot in the, in the movies where they have this big computer and everything needs to go into mainframes. So, right, right. You know, we started working in that and moving into different roles. But one thing that has always remained common is that how do you convert um, any situation but look at it from a strategic point of view. Okay. Because the way I have been, uh, my resiliency uh, throughout my childhood and uh, what I have become, and then the way I had to tackle different things, it made me into a thinker, in, into a strategic thinker, and build something from scratch, um, making an impact, uh, making an impact to the area that I'm working in. So I have been working in different areas, but my main focus has always been that how do we connect the dots and be able to make it into something bigger. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's what strategy requires, right? Requires you to be able to assess the situation and figure out a way, if not different ways of getting a result from that process, right? Absolutely. And I would say one thing, Larry, is that for me, it is, at least from my experience and how I have looked at it, um, I have told this many times, I'm fueled by my passion for technology and the change it brings to people's lives. Mm -hmm. So always and always, I say this to everybody, always start with the why. I, I always my, ask myself in any role, what is the impact of this role? What is the, if there is an initiative that I'm going to take, what is the impact it is going to make? Of course, there are two things. One is the goals, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is going to have operational efficiency or we are going to increase our market base or it is something to improve our quality. But, the, but, but even more important than that is the people. Okay. What impact will it make on the people? Is it going to make their life easier? Is it going to give them results faster? What exactly, like why are you even doing this? And mm -hmm. I feel that once you have a why to that, then you are able to create the vision. You are able to tell yourself that, yes, you want to spend extra hours on this and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And then you're also able to show that passion and share that passion with the team that you bring on to that uh, initiative mm -hmm. and be able to lead them that. Because until you tell your team the why of it, it is very hard for them to be able to, you know, be connected to it and be invested in it. True, so true. I always feel that having begin with the why, always begin with the impact that you're going to make. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you mentioned team. Team is very important when you're building a business, period. Like what my company does, it teaches people how to set up the foundation of an online business. So uh, you want to do that by yourself when you first start, because there's a lot of moving parts you're not really familiar with. And first of all, you need to learn the terminology, right? You need to learn the language that's spoken in that world. Because there's a language that's spoken in that world, right? I'm sorry? I said there's a language that's spoken in whatever uh, endeavor you decide to take. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever the jargon you have to use. Right, right. And then once you learn that, then like what I like about the internet is that one of the main things that we do as entrepreneurs um, individually is create content, right? Now, as you create that content, it, get, it makes you a smarter person in line with what you're creating content about, right? Absolutely. And then, you have, Absolutely. then you have people that you're connecting, uh, like you, I would connect you with someone that never would have seen you originally, right? And then they would contact you and then they can access your system. That's one exactly. of the things I love about being able to do all this from the comfort of your own home too, right? Absolutely. Are you, are you guys working from home or are you working at the, at the office? Well, right now we are working from home. Okay. Because I'm in IT, so I really need not, it's not necessary for me to go to work. And uh, all of IT is working from uh, home right now. Okay. Usually, of course, we go to work. But that's a good thing because, see, a lot of times before technology, you wouldn't be able to work at all. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I was uh, very impressed with our, with our systems because our, our, 
our department was able to move in less than 24 hours, wow. uh, able to completely go uh, work from home, all the employees. So it is pretty robust, you know, and that's the beauty of technology these days. Right. That, uh, you know, it can enable you in, in ways that you cannot even imagine. Right. And it's only going to increase. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, you brought a very good point where you said um, somebody, now we are connected. So somebody, I can connect you to a number of people and you can connect me to a number of people. Right. And people are the biggest asset. It, it's not, like I said, even in the why, it's, it's the people, the impact you are making. Mm -hmm. uh, that matters. Whether you are doing a content creation online, you know, small businesses or whatever you are doing, mm -hmm. having the passion, being in the right place, like that being your first thing, and then why behind the reasoning behind it will make you successful. So, you know, because then your work is not really work because you are connected to it. True, true. And then you, you mentioned about people and uh, I am guilty of it because in, in the earlier days of my career, I used to think that for any project to be successful, I need to have control, you know, of uh, not the control necessary, but they need to be reporting to me mm -hmm. for making something happen. I am personally guilty of that. But what I realized over the period of time is that it doesn't matter whether they, whether that person, those people that you would require to make this a success are on your team or not. What matters are is that who, wherever they belong, you have built your network and you have built the goodwill for them to help you make something successful. Very and that important. is why I feel the why is so important because people don't do something for you. People do something when they feel connected to the cause that you are behind. Right, right. And right. I think, uh, after reading this book, I don't know if you have heard about it, Leading with Authority, Without Authority, by Keith Ferrarzi. He mentions it very beautifully that it doesn't matter in these days whether the hierarchical system of uh, working is long gone. In the new world, it's all about uh, flatlining. You know, oh, everybody wow. is equal. And you need to be, it doesn't matter if somebody is up, you know, about the rank in your mm -hmm. career or, you know, below the rank. What matters is who is right for that particular thing. And if they feel invested in it, you can really bring wonders to your right. project. I agree. And I have myself personally faced this now because the current role I have, it was very, it would have been very difficult without getting into the details of it it would have been very difficult to achieve the kind of results that we are achieving, uh, you know, um, I, we are department wide because, because of COVID situation, many people had to leave and, you know, all of that happened. So how do you still make something successful because, you know, you're passionate about it, right. you have to know the reasoning behind it and how you are going to impact other people and, uh, we connect and connect with people who can make it a success. It doesn't matter whether they are in the company, outside the company, in your department, not in your department. Right. Increase right. your network and be, I, and I think, you know, many people take it in a wrong sense as well. You know, mm -hmm. you be, do the networking, but I, I used to look at it negatively as well. But in reality, a human being, you know, I, I, there's a saying, right? Um, walk alone and, you will go far, walk together, uh, and something you you will go way you know farther I away. Know what you're saying. If you, it says if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go, if you want to go, if you want to have fun, go with someone else. Or someone go else. with someone else. You know. Yeah. So that is the whole beauty of it. So we have to remember whether you are in a content creation world mm -hmm. or IT or any any ma as a matter of fact anything, people. Are, are your biggest asset and Absolutely. you know you have to make sure that you understand that value them mm -hmm. and um, make them a part of your journey now when you uh one of the one of the keys that i i share with all my clients coming in is that what you said about your passion how your passion plays a very important role into whether or not you look at what you do as a job or whether you're not you look at it as work 
or whether or not you look at it as doing what you love, you know, and there is a difference there, but it's like, I, I equate, it, equate it to an athlete, you know, athletes that like basketball, they start from like five, seven, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11, playing basketball, all those years, all the way up to college and, you know, in pros if they make it, but they have a passion for that game, right? So they would do it for free. Actually, exactly. they, they are doing it for free the first 10 years, right? Yeah. But because they do it re re repetitively, they get better at it. And as you get better at it, then you actually have the opportunity to take it to the next level. But you have to put that work in. See, they're putting in the work six, seven, eight, nine years straight, probably, you know, five or six days a week. Not because they have to, but because they enjoy it. Want to, they enjoy it. Right, right, and that makes such a big difference. Now, one of the ways I tell people how to identify their passion, because a lot of times, uh, as strange as this may seem, a lot of people I share uh, information with, they really can't identify what their passion is. But they will say things like, I know I wanna help somebody, or I know I wanna do something for somebody. And you know, it's very important that you're specific when you're doing what you want to do, right? Because you're going to be spending a lot of time doing that. So uh, how would you recommend a person identify what they have a passion for? Or do you Absolutely. So when I say IT or technology was my passion right from the beginning, I didn't know it was my passion. It's not like I knew it. I just enjoyed doing it. Okay. And I kept on at it and then started studying and all of that. But then as I came into, you know, work, work culture, like work world, mm -hmm. um, my career began, I started realizing how much I enjoy uh, working on projects where I exactly, where I am able to see the impact, Okay. you know, where I'm not in just um, the background, but I'm able to connect it to the impact as well. Mm -hmm. So that is when, in a way, it helped me understand that it is important to me that I am making a difference uh, to the people and that is what gives me happiness. But then I also um, have uh, tried this Ikigai model. I don't know if you have heard about it. It's a Japanese thing, I believe. And I, I did this. Uh, it's a little study. I can even share a link for your viewers uh, who would be interested in it. And what it talks about is what you are good at and what pays for it. Uh, what, what pays your bills, that is one uh, area. Okay. What you are good at is one area. What, and the a third area is what you enjoy doing. What is that you enjoy doing? I, don't, I can't remember the fourth area, but the fourth area is about um, what pays the bills, what you enjoy, um, uh, what, uh, what is, uh, yeah, the fourth area is what is that thing when you are actually working on it, you lose the track of time. Okay. So, and then what you have to do, it, ha it has several steps. And then eventually you come up with your passion. Mm -hmm. And that passion is something which will pay your bill as well as, you know, kind of um, uh, put you in a space, uh, put you in a place where you would actually forget time. You know, wow. when you're really interested in something, you uh -huh. don't really realize how much time you spend on that. You know, right, when you're on right. a good date, you don't realize how much time uh, went by because Absolutely. you're interested in it. Because it's so actually fun that to That is you. the sweet spot one uh -huh. needs to find. Thank but you. to me, what I realized, and I can share that link with you as well, okay. is that it's not just enough to find your passion. What is important after that? Okay, now you did this model and you figured out, and of course it changes with time as well. As you mm -hmm. go, these things change. What is important after that is that you put in the work. Right, right. You are, and, and it's not like, uh, you know, one day you are here and you found your passion and then you are going to be at the top of the mm -hmm. cliff. You have to put the work in. I'm still not... Um, I don't think I have reached where I want to, you know, be in my life, mm -hmm. but certainly you have to every day, keep working at it, keep putting time in it. And one day, hopefully, you know, the stars will align and you mm -hmm. will be there at the destination. That but you what, what, I believe too, what I believe too, uh, Shivani, is that, uh, that this is a picture I paint for people that initially 
when you begin doing what it is that you do, it's going to seem like there is a big wall, right? And as you get more, uh, as you understand more about what it is that you're doing and get more knowledgeable, that wall starts to, doors start to appear. Doors that only look like a wall because you didn't have the knowledge to know that that was a door, right? But as you gain more knowledge, what happens is that door actually opens for you and you get an opportunity to go through it because now you know what that means, what that's about. And one of the, getting back to the uh, finding the passion, let me ask you how you feel about this way of determining what you have a passion for. If you uh, are searching for what you have a passion for, I tell people that imagine yourself walking into a library, right? If you walk into a library, what section kind of pulls you that way? Is it the home and garden? Is it the self-help? Is it the photography? What section kind of says to you, I want to go look at that first. That's a good place to start, especially, go ahead, especially from a content creation perspective, because you yep. can become a, see what my system teaches you to do is become an expert at what you do. And people will pay large amounts of money for expert advice, especially Absolutely. when you are truly an expert. And when you do what you do for years with an S, you're going to become an expert. But there's levels, you know, like I say, this is one of the things that hold a lot of people back. They think that you have to make millions of dollars. No, 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 no. I would be just as happy to make 500,000. I don't need millions, you know? And some people be, would be just as happy. I tell people this, if you can make $25,000 a year in your own business, you, you understand it. You know what I'm saying? Because you can raise that 25,000 to 50. You can raise that 50 to 100. But if you are at zero and you're, you're not doing anything, it's only because you're not putting in the effort that you're not getting the results. Because you got, well, you'll get smarter. And as you'll get smarter, you'll meet people, you'll make connections. And uh, I tell people to always uh, look for what you call, what I call heroes, people that are doing what you want to do and start to study those people, right? And then learn their systems that they have in place because that's what you want to do. Yeah, so it's kind of like you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right, right. It's a, there's a model right there for you to follow, and then uh, you while you go, while you're doing that, you're going to learn people that they study, you know, and then you you before and you can learn from their mistakes. Huh? You can even learn from their mistakes. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that's I, I love what you said about the wall and the door. I, uh -huh. I'm going to keep. It's going to stay with me because uh -huh. you are so right. You know. You think that it's a wall, and there's also something called as imposter syndrome. Imposter uh, syndrome. Yep. Yeah, what ha I mean, it, it's a very um, well-known term in uh, at least the leadership roles. Okay. That you are in a certain role, and it's pretty. It's pretty common in women. I have. Uh, that's what the statistics say. Okay. So what it means is that men apply for a certain role when they are. Uh, when they are like, I think 70% of, uh, when, they, when they satisfy the 70% 70 uh, 70 of requirements. Mm -hmm. For women, until they are like 100% of <laughs> requirement, they right. will not apply. Ah. And then even if they get that job, they will feel that, you know, that I wasn't good enough, even though they ah. will be. But uh -huh. that's, the, that's the way sometimes, and I don't think it's just for women. I think I have spoken to many people and they feel sometimes that that confidence is not there. Mm -hmm. And I have heard this from, you know, entry level people to, you know, directors and senior managers as well, mm -hmm. because many times you don't internalize what the value that you bring to the table. So you have to go through that. And whenever you are doing content creation and anything as well, I have seen that people sometimes feel, oh, I don't have it in me. Mm -hmm. And they feel that I'm getting all these opportunities by luck, but they have to help themselves and understand that, no, you are putting the work in, you are getting there slowly and steadily right, and, right, you know, right. making an impact. And sometimes you have to, this is what I tell some clients that have that kind of issue. Uh, sometimes you have to believe in somebody else's belief in you until in you. yours kick, kicks in. Because if you, if I believe in you and I keep giving you uh, instructions on how to get there, Sooner or later, you're going to have confidence in yourself. You're going to start to feel like, hey, I can do this. Yeah. You know, and especially when I'm kind of like, like I mentor several people too. 
So when I'm someone that you can kind of call and you know find out if that's the way you want, you really need to do that, then that kind of solidifies your faith in you because you'll take more of a risk, you know, because you know, before I actually push send or submit, I'm gonna check with Larry. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna put it all together. But before I push send. No, absolutely. Go. I, I totally agree with you. I think having mentors in your life who can uh, support you and mm -hmm. show you many times there are the mentors can also be the other way around that you know you are really up in the air and they can pull you down which is also right. good because right. you also need to be grounded but many times you don't believe in yourself but they see it and they believe in you and that mm -hmm. raises the confidence in you to achieve something way bigger than uh, you might have imagined but it's always it's always been my experience that it's a two-way street because I learned just as well from them, you know, because, Absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the things that I do is I consciously uh, do things to remain humble because I know with success, it's easy to think that it's about you. Get into your head. <laughs> yeah. And then that's, that's the wrong path. And then, you know, I believe that uh, everything is connected universally, you know, like the plants, the water, everything is connected in some way or another. Like I was, let me give you a quick example that kind of confused me. I was watching a video the other day, just a short clip someone sent me, and there was a fish. Now the fish was swimming underwater, right? And then there was a bird flying above the water. And the, all of a sudden the fish came out of the water and grabbed the bird and took the bird under. And, I, and my question was, I didn't know that a bird was on a fish's diet. Did you? No. I didn't either. I was like, I didn't know bird, fish ate birds. You know, it must like be like a delicacy because you don't really get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's shocked me. But, you know, we all have a um, like a what we eat. Like we have we have a um, diet that if you have a dog, that dog eats certain things. If you have a fish, that fish eats certain things. And also all those are connected in some way, shape, fashion or form. Right? When you look at the big picture of things, you know, and uh, being able to understand that that life is is that big and you're not really that that much you know what i'm saying kind of holds you down to where you need to be to me exactly yeah yeah so when you uh when you find yourself kind of like overwhelmed how do you handle that process well i have i i don't think i have a set process for every you know every situation that i face but in general this is what my thought this is how i deal with it Whenever I'm overwhelmed in a situation or anything like that, so it might sound cliche, but a regular meditation helps. Mm -hmm. I think it keeps you calm. Uh, regular exercise certainly helps because what happens is exercise is for your physical body, but then meditation and thing is your for internal body. There you you go. know, your, in, your, your in, internal uh, mind actually. And it really helps you keep calm. It helps you make better decisions. Mm -hmm. But again, when the situations come and you know you feel in you feel overwhelmed by something, regular thing is great. But what I do is I definitely journal. Okay. I journal in a sense that if this is this has happened not to me, mm -hmm. but to my friend. Okay. I write it in that way and then I read it. And when I read it, I am more kind because. I wouldn't, if, if it was something happening to me, I wouldn't be as kind to myself, and, uh, but I will be kind to my friend. Uh -huh. So when I read it, then the emotion I feel about my, you know, for my best friend or the way the advice I would give to her mm -hmm. will be, is something that I apply to myself then. Ah, see. At times what I also do, I have, I am blessed to have mentors uh, from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And, um, I also try to pay it forward by mentoring other people, you know, mm -hmm. who I uh, connect with and all that. So sometimes they have been helping me, you know, I just set up some time with them, reach out to them and say, okay, this is what is happening and all of that. And once you, uh, out, you know, once you download all of that from yeah. your system, right. sometimes right. the mentor will not even say something and you have a clarity of how you want to. Approach. I've been there. I've been right. There. So, and and the best thing, I'm not saying I, I have the mastery on it. Sometimes saying nothing is also a good thing. True. Well, so when right. a situation happens, it's not necessary that you have to react. Right. You can even respond. You can that's, stop. That to me is growth. 
you can is you know that's the growth and you can go back and you can come back and you have a response so mm -hmm. i think i have uh, tackled a lot of such situations because when you are in these situ you know delivering something in in a in a in a bigger scale um, you have to take a step back you have to uh, stop and think mm -hmm. and then see what your next step is how do you, one more question before I leave you. How do you uh, share, well, let me see, is, that's not the word I want to use. How do you uh, help someone who, who would, is what I would call a procrastinator? How would you help them get on the right track? You know, are, you going to, are you asking me how I help my husband? <laughs> <laughs> well, those people, boy, I'm telling you, there's something else. <laughs> okay, so, uh, no, I think my husband is fine. I was just, you know, <laughs> that's just, uh, okay. <laughs> Um, I have had, you know, I, I, I have led teams over, you know, over some years now, and I have had people, you know, people on my team who, who, um, I wouldn't call them procrastinators, but then I call them detail oriented because what I have seen with pro procrastination, because if, if somebody is in some field, they want to do things. It's not that they don't want to, but they are overthinking as well many times. So how I have approached it, and I could be, you know, it could be a different person that I have de dealt with, but how I de deal with such things is that I try to pair people. Try to what? I try to pair people. Oh, okay. If there is a project and I have a procrastinator, I try to pair them with somebody who is, uh, you know, I at it, you know, go-getter. Right, Because right. I feel what happens is it brings the overall speed Mm -hmm. to a very nice normal that makes sense that makes sense you know that's what i do because what i try to do even with myself i i first of first of all you need to know what your strengths and weaknesses are mm -hmm. and it also changes over the period of time absolutely because you're adding right? skills you're adding skills all along yeah. exactly so one when you are in that space even for your starting even starting with yourself if I am a go-getter, I need to be with somebody who is a detail-oriented. I am also detail-oriented, but then in a way, the aspects that I might miss, mm -hmm. you know, the person who can, uh, you know, hold me and say, okay, these are the things we should worry about as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then we also need to accomplish things. We need to, uh, you know, bring people together. So I always try to see what is the strength in my team. Mm -hmm. and uh, what are the what are their weaknesses and then help them play by their strengths and not totally keep focusing on their weaknesses mm -hmm. that you know they procrastinate they procrastinate rather uh, team pair them up with somebody who is a go-getter and then you know overall uh, develop the relationship within the team help them provide them a, um, an environment which supports the, you know uh, help them get closer and um, understand the why of it you know yeah, why yeah, we are yeah. doing this mm -hmm. and uh, you know it, it just comes full circle then because you're not constantly judging people based on their weaknesses mm -hmm. you're rather helping them shine in their strengths there we go there we go all right well listen it's uh getting close to that what i call the bewitching hour <laughs> i've had a good time talking with you i really enjoy these types of things and i really uh i'm a speaker too right when it's not COVID, i'm out speaking too so Awesome. I really like this process a lot better. Do you go, do you get a chance to go out and speak sometimes? I do, but of course, uh, not as much as you do, Larry. But, right, right. but, but you know, but, that's the business I'm in, though. You're really not in that business. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, true. Do you get nervous when you speak? What do you think? Was <laughs> I nervous? <laughs> no, I mean in front of a uh, in front of a crowd. Not necessarily. I okay. I don't know. You know. I have uh, I have a natural I think I have a natural knack of uh, connecting okay, uh, okay. to people and I don't know I just treat them as people so mm -hmm. I I I don't think I get that nervous. Gotcha, gotcha. Because a lot of people get nervous. Actually, I got really nervous when I began this process. I went to uh, Toastmasters. You ever heard of Toastmasters? Yeah. Yeah, and I went through that system right there and it got helped a lot. And then just repetition over time, you know, you kind of get better at doing what you do. But, uh, no, absolutely. Really, again, One thing I'm so glad that, uh, you know, at least I didn't have stage fright since childhood, <laughs> thankfully. That, that's, what I, that's what I had, was stage fright. You know, <laughs> I would sweat, I would like 
feel jittery. I, I, was, I couldn't focus on my, my message. And then they, through the process, it shifted everything. And when I got it, I was like, that's it. That's what I needed to be right there. So now I don't have a problem. But you, really you, like got you got through it. You got through it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But see, I didn't stop. And let, let me tell you one more quick statistic that I, sh I, I like to share with people from time to time. I did an interview with this guy uh, probably about eight interviews ago, and he was telling me that he was a numbers guy, right? And I, I, I like numbers, but I'm not a numbers guy. And he said this. He, he gave me this statistic. He said that uh, the 80-20 rule, only 20% of the people that you come in contact with are going to become interested in what you have to offer. And he says that when someone starts something, 98% of them get right to the end and stop before they become successful. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. It does, doesn't it? I was like, wow, that is so true. I believe Because I believe the people are really close when they say, I, gotta, I can't do it anymore. You turn around, you know. But you got to keep going. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. That's where the success comes in, right? I, I loved having this conversation with you and I learned a lot of anecdotes. So those are going to stay with me. <laughs> I hope right. we stay in touch. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime you feel like, you know, reaching out, don't feel like we can have another interview. I like doing this. Absolutely. Interviews. All right. Well, listen, the way I like to end the show is uh, my name is Larry James. My company is Speak with Larry. And as always, share with someone else what I've shared with you. All right, Shivana, have a great evening. Shivani.